Alrighty, party peoples of the interwebs, Viva Fry, former Montreal litigator turned current Florida rumbler, getting ready to shoot another episode of The Unusual Suspects. I'm going to be doing a bit on the summary of the Demonic National Convention, otherwise known as the DNC, that's happening up in Chicago. But the big news of the day today is apparently the running mate of RFK Jr., floating the idea of Kennedy dropping out and joining forces with Trump to defeat the demonic party of America, the Democrat party of America. Before we even get into that, the DNC. I'm making a joke that it's the demonic national convention. I'm borrowing a meme from Kyle Kemper, who is the good half-brother of Justin Trudeau, who is very much supportive of RFK up in Chicago right now. You know, supporting RFK even though it seems that it might be not just a lost cause, but RFK staying in the race might actually help the people that are literally trying to kill him. We'll get there. But it is a demonic national convention. There's no question about it. In as much as humans can actually be demons in human form, what we're witnessing there can't be described as anything else. I talked about it because at first I didn't believe it that there were abortion clinics, mobile abortion clinics going to Chicago to celebrate the DNC, it turns out to be true. Planned Parenthood bringing their mobile abortion and vasectomy bus, whatever the hell it is, to Chicago, administering abortions. I don't know if it's medicinal ones, you know, like medications, or they're going in with invasive procedures. I don't know how they're doing vasectomies. I know a vasectomy is said to be an in and out procedure, but I've also known people who've had some complications from vasectomies. I'm not jumping on a bus to get a vasectomy if you paid me, and I'm not getting a vasectomy anyhow, but set that aside. It's true. They have a bus that is up in Chicago, and apparently it's too busy to even book from a review that someone sent me. Uh, they are busy, too busy for business. I don't know how many abortions they have administered. and. It doesn't even matter what your position is on abortion unless you actively celebrate it, which is demonic. If you think that abortion is a necessary evil or a wrong that people need to have access to, something along the lines of Bill Clinton 20 years ago, rare, safe, but rare, I don't know, that's not exactly what he said. Assume that you believe in a woman's right to have an abortion up to a certain point. That doesn't necessarily translate into celebrating it as though it's a rite of passage, which is what's going on here. And there can be nothing more demonic than celebrating as something of a political rite of passage, ending what would become a human life. I appreciate there are people who believe from conception, and this is not even a question of what you believe on the issue. Regardless of what you believe on the issue, unless you believe in late-term abortions, post-birth abortions, and yes, they do exist, the law in California was going to decriminalize, or at least render obsolete or not necessary investigations into the deaths of babies if they occur within one month of delivery that is designed exactly at not investigating late-term abortions or abortions of viable fetuses or post-delivery abortions as that psychopath from virginia said you know we'll keep the we'll keep the baby comfortable after it's delivered and have a discussion with the mother as to what we want to do that there are you know when we talk about third trimester uh, abortions these are done uh, with the consent uh, of obviously the the mother with the consent uh, of the physicians more than one physician by the way um, and it's done in cases where there may be severe deformities there may be a, a, a fetus that's non-viable so in this particular example uh, if a mother is in labor I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen um, the infant would be delivered uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. So, so I think this was really blown out of proportion. It doesn't matter what your position is, except if you're a demon. You would not go out and celebrate abortions, which is what they are effectively doing at the DNC. Now, in fairness to the DNC, if I have to be fair to demons, it's the Planned Parenthood that's doing it, not the DNC. But you'd want to dissociate yourself from such conduct unless you tacitly, if not explicitly, endorse it. And they do. All right, that's one thing. The second thing, Obama, Michelle Obama, gave a speech yesterday. It's amazing. People tell you who they are in their accusations of others. Michelle Obama actually got up there and said her parents were suspicious of people who took more than they need in terms of wealth, money, etc. She and my father didn't aspire to be wealthy. In fact, they were suspicious of folks who took more than they needed. 
they understood that it wasn't enough for their kids to thrive if everyone else around us was drowning. Obama, last I checked, was charging $400,000, $600,000 for speaking fees. You want to talk about taking more than you need? You want to talk about living on that island? Oh, forget the name of it now. Oh, geez. Where the Martha's Vineyard. Living in a multi-million dollar mansion in Martha's Vineyard. Set aside the hypocrisy and the contradiction of, you know, the environmental crisis. That'll all be washed up if you truly believe rising ocean levels are going to wash out ocean side views. Four hundred, six hundred thousand dollars for speaking fees, and Michelle Obama is going to get up there and say, "Hey, I'm one of the people. My parents were skeptical, were suspicious of people who took more than they needed." Congratulations, you just described yourself. Your parents would be suspicious of you and your husband. All right, hypocrisy be thy name of the DNC. The news of the day. It actually broke yesterday, and I'm skeptical. You know, you should not trust anything and verify everything. Tim Pool put out a tweet that said, I wholeheartedly endorse this. The tweet going down was apparently Kennedy talking about withdrawing from the race and endorsing Trump. And I'm skeptical because we heard some fake news about Kennedy allegedly trying to contact the Harris campaign to drop out of the race if it would secure him a position in the demonic national committee, the DNC, the Democrats uh, administration. I was like, this never happened. It never would happen. It's not something that is even feasible. And the fact that people believed it, anybody who did believe it, is an idiot. You think RFK Jr. is going to go join alliances with the party that literally wants him dead. It's never happened. It's not, not going to happen. Period. So when I hear this, I'm like, okay, be skeptical. I think, I don't think this is happening, but my goodness, would it be good if it's true? I didn't know that um, RFK Jr.'s running mate I think it was on, oh, I don't know the name of the podcast. She did a podcast and she specifically said, yeah, we're thinking of dropping out at this point and supporting Trump because they're killing us with lawfare. They're killing us by literally, you know, trying to kill us by not giving us secret service protection until recently, which forces the RFK Jr. campaign to spend millions and millions of dollars on security. They're trying to keep us off the ballot. They're trying to keep us out of the debates. And if we stay in, we might only inadvertently help the people who literally want us dead. So we're thinking about dropping out and endorsing Trump. And I'm like, if they do that, can you imagine anything more beautiful? And not just because I like RFK Jr. and having his influence in the Trump campaign would be the most value added, net positive imaginable. That would be a true unity ticket. We had talked about this a while back. It would be a true unity ticket. If it happens, we'll see. Still skeptical, but she did in fact say it. But you have people on the internet saying, if RFK does that, it's the ultimate betrayal. I'm not putting anyone on blast because I genuinely want to know the thought process. And I'm like, betrayal of whom? It certainly would not be a betrayal of Trump supporters. So that only leaves two options. A betrayal of Kennedy supporters, we'll get to that in a second, or a betrayal of Democrats. And I said to this person, you're betraying the people who want you dead. You're betraying the people who are using lawfare to bankrupt you. You are betraying the people who are trying to keep you off the ballot and people who are trying to keep you out of the debates. You're not betraying people who hate you. In fact, if you stayed in and it only helped them, you would then be betraying the only people who this might be a betrayal of, Kennedy supporters. And would it be a betrayal of Kennedy supporters? You know, presumably people support Kennedy because they respect his judgment, they respect his decisions, and they respect him as a person. And if Kennedy comes out and says, look, I've weighed the pros and cons. If I stay in, it's only going to actually help the people who hate me and are trying to hurt me. How do you not respect that decision? Quite clearly, if you don't respect that decision of Kennedy, you are not really a Kennedy supporter in the first place. Some people might argue, and I'll steel man this, it would be like Bernie supporters not listening to Bernie when he went and endorsed Hillary Clinton and now said, go support Hillary Clinton. That was betrayal. That was betrayal of Bernie supporters because the context was entirely different. Bernie Sanders, who betrayed me because at one point I thought, you know, Bernie Sanders seems like a principled guy. He could be a good candidate 2016. When he went and then endorsed the woman who screwed him, the party that betrayed him, that is a betrayal of Bernie supporters. That's not analogous to what's going on now. This would be a betrayal of Kennedy supporters if Trump tried to sabotage Kennedy, if Trump tried to have Kennedy killed. This is Kennedy going to support the only party that actually supported Kennedy to some extent, and I should say Trump. This is going to lend his support to the person who has somewhat aligned himself with Kennedy on key issues, agriculture, bodily autonomy, investigating the jibby jab and 
the big V in general. So it's not even analogous to Bernie Sanders betraying his supporters by saying, go support the woman who just screwed me, cheated, and stole, you know, the primary from me. This would be the most amazing thing on earth if it happens. I'm not holding my breath, but I'm crossing my fingers and we'll see. I suspect it will be reflected in the markets. Not that I'm following these markets, but I am. Poly market, although I don't have any investments there, predict it. They don't have enough markets for me, but it's amazing. We'll see what happens to be continued. By the way, if you like what I do and you are not already subscribed, make sure that you subscribe. Turn on the notifications so that you get notified when videos of mine pop up. Uh, share it around with people who you think would like it, but more importantly, share it with people who you think would not like it because they probably need to see it the most. Our merch game, we're getting ready to up our merch game a little bit. If you want to get some merch, go to vivafry.com. The best way to support us, vivabarnslaw.locals.com. For the best above average community out there, but most importantly, exercise, eat healthy, sunlight, talk to people in real life. I got to go in there and shoot an episode, go live, and now you know your vlog. Peace out, peeps. Booyah. Hey, I'm Julia, the intern with the Free Press, and today I am in Chicago where the DNC is happening at the Into Action exhibit. There is a van offering abortion pills and vasectomies. I tried to sign up, but the list was full. And in here is an art exhibit with art about abortion. I was just wondering if you could tell me what's in this van. That's a mobile health care clinic. What specifically, what forms of health care are in there? Uh, today are as medication abortion, and yesterday uh, was vasectomy. You've had really high demand, right? Uh, yeah, people need to access health care wherever they go.